when you bring up jitter, there's like two kinds of people. There's the propeller heads, and they know that jitter just doesn't matter because we build all sorts of sonnet net and GPS and all sorts of incredibly fast clocked systems in computers and elsewhere. And the audiophiles, like I mentioned before, audiophiles live in fear of jitter. It's the boogeyman. And they know it matters, but they don't know exactly why or how much. On, in the propeller head side, all that matters about the jitter is that you can accu accurately determine the correct bits. And so they put in, anytime they need to, a reclocker. And the reclocker has some size of buffer, and it has a PLL that measures extremely accurately the incoming clock. And then based on that, it regenerates a new clock and takes the data out of the buffer in exact time. And these things are lockstep, but in that world, it doesn't matter if the phase changes a little bit on the input to the output or anything like that. All they got to do is make sure they don't lose the data. Well, in reality, that's true in audio everywhere except right at the DAC, which is where jitter gets transformed into changes in the timing of what we hear. And that's what our ears are hearing is the timing. We don't, I mean, we do care about whether a bit's high or low in DSD, but that timing also matters to our ear, and that's not what the propeller heads are talking about when they talk about jitter. The actual timing is irrelevant as long as it's small enough that you don't miss what a bit is. Our ears are more sensitive than that. How much more sensitive? Well, people run experiments that tell us our ears are not phase sensitive. That's a lie. They're phase sensitive on an impulse. They're not phase sensitive when you're listening to sine waves. Well, I don't listen to sine waves, so I don't care. But the point is, is what are you measuring when you're trying to do a measurement of how much jitter matters to a human? I'm, I'm just speculating here, but does jitter matter more for somebody that's got perfect pitch than not? We know that jitter matters more for people that listen to music a lot. If, if the people that don't ever listen to music don't care as much about jitter, their brains aren't sensitized to it, they're not worried as much about the timing, and I'll just, this is probably false, but I'd speculate that the drummers might care more about jitter than players of, you know, a clarinet or something, because they, their timing is fairly precise, and I have no idea how you can get 10 drummers and have them do an excellent job when they have had to decide a long time ago when to put the stick down. Now, some numbers I know from personal experience, you can go buy chips from Scilabs and other places that generate a clock and from that, I'm sorry, I should say that take a clock and from that can generate any other clock frequency you want. I bought some of those chips, put them in a, a DAC, and I also put it in with a very low phase error crystal and listened to the difference. The, the chips I bought from Scilabs had a spec of 0.2 picoseconds of jitter. And that's easy to prove is correct because what they do is they take the clock you give them and they multiply it up to 5 gigahertz. If you're at 5 gigahertz, uh, if you decide to go one clock earlier or one clock later, that's 0.2 picoseconds. I could hear it. It was better than, you know, lower jitter than a lot of systems have, but it still wasn't as good as a nice, clean crystal. When I called up Scilabs and asked, can I, do you have something that tracks more slowly? They said, why? And I said, because I can hear the jitter. And they said, what? They didn't believe me, but you know what? A year later, they put out a product that has a much slower adaptation for the PLL and therefore generated less jitter. So they must have heard from people like me and decided that market was big enough that it matters to lower the jitter that way. But still, 0.2 picoseconds of jitter, I know you can hear. So if somebody says they only have, you know, one picosecond or three nanoseconds of jitter, I know that you can hear it in some circumstances. I'm not saying everybody hears it, but I'm saying it does matter 